current management is is primarily medical and then in some late stage cases surgical so that and that really has changed in the last five years you know before you know very little uh, very few patients were managed medically because medication didn't reverse the disease but now that we have therapies that can actually reverse the disease not just hold it steady but actually reverse many of the findings, reverse the bulging, reverse the inflammation that's occurring here, then that becomes something that um, has, has really taken off. Uh, still, there are patients that elect for surgery, and surgery is, is certainly you know, very reasonable. And that's indicated to try just to overcome some of the appearance issues, some of the, if there's any impingement on the optic nerve, things like that to make more room behind the eye. It doesn't reverse the disease. It just kind of helps with the symptoms. You know, a, a milestone in the treatment of thyroid eye disease occurred um, in 2020 with the introduction of Tepratumumab. And that was the first you know, you know, indication uh, of a medication by the FDA for treatment of thyroid eye disease. And now there's, there is uh, you know, a whole host of medications that in the next few years will either um, work on the IGF-1 receptor or other receptors associated in this disease pathogenesis. So it's really a, a, a great time into thinking about the emergence of, of therapies. And in, in such, there will also be um, potentially oral therapies and therapies that are easy uh, for patients to, to, both, to get. Uh, and if they have a reactivation, uh, also easy for any kind of future treatments um, for them. It's very exciting. You know, um, the, so the immune system attacks the IGF-1 receptor. And tepratumumab was innovative, and it blocks that receptor and blocks the activation. So it kind of turns down the thermostat of these cells. Bling um, uh, Therapeutics is now coming out with a molecule that's an oral therapy, and it's a small molecule. So instead of having to get an IV, you could actually take this as a pill. And it's a small molecule that does exactly the same thing, and it's targeted to this receptor to stop its activation. And so it's very exciting that, you know, there will be options for patients, hopefully in the relatively near future. So the FDA was very clear in, in telling us how trials should be conducted and moved forward um, for treatment of thyroid eye disease. And so the trial for SLING is also in a similar vein in that it's treatment of reversal of the eye bulging that's right. due to thyroid eye disease. And this is primarily in patients with active thyroid eye disease, and they're given a treatment with an oral medication. And 24 weeks later, look for improvement of that disease, meaning improvement of the eye bulging, and then other endpoints such as double vision, et cetera. And that trial is underway in, in um, you know, over 20 centers around the world, you know, garnering exceptional enthusiasm. And hopefully uh, in the next several months, uh, come to, to some conclusion in moving that, that phase forward. So the timeline of the trial is it's currently enrolling patients. Um, you know, and with trials, you know, it's always, you know, a matter of when uh, enough patients are enrolled to meet the enrollment criteria. And hopefully that, you know, will happen in the next few months. But, uh, you know, so, so there is opportunity for patients still to enroll in these local centers for this trial. And this will be the first of two trials that are needed by the FDA. Uh, so there will be a follow-up trial, um, in, in, you know, after this as a confirmatory uh, if, if testing is positive.